Hello everyone and welcome to today's video, which will be quite interesting because today AMD launched their new graphic cards, somewhat, I would say, refreshed, in terms of battling the RTX 4070, but not only in price comparison, but also in some performance, of course. And today we have one from Sapphire, this is the Radeon RX 7900 GRE. Nitro Plus, and it enters the gaming on 1440p in ultra details without, I would say, without a hiccup. But then again, we have some slight entry at 4K as well. So we're going to break it down today and going to check this card out. And I'm not going to go too much into detailed specs, but just the ones that you need to know comparing to the RTX 4070 give you some idea and then we're gonna go to gaming, synthetic benchmarks and actually the temperatures uh, on this uh, GPU to give you some idea about it and what can you expect. Now the quite interesting thing about everything when we're talking about this GPU is that the uh, MSRP is $549. Of course uh, in Europe it won't be that price unfortunately because after all taxes and all the other VAT and all the other stuff but uh, we can expect it to be somewhere around RTX 4070 giving us somewhat a cool card in terms of, well, visuals aren't uh, here important, but uh, in terms of performance and uh, price and I think that's going to be quite cool without a doubt. Of course we have new drivers, new set of drivers to cover up with the GRE models and uh, this will be a very very cool to check out. So let's start with the main stuff and what AMD actually decided to go with this. As I stated, it starts with 1440p gaming and kind of does keep it quite nice in those segments in that resolution. When we enter 4K uh, gaming, the thing is it doesn't perform on ultra details and you have some games that you'll most likely struggle to even reach 30 FPS. But if you lower down from ultra details to, I would say, medium to high, you would most likely hit 60 FPS and they'll be quite all right because after all it is a 7900, but it's not XT and it's not XTX. So we're having somewhat a downgrade, but downgrade with the price as well to be competitive with RTX 4070. Now, first of all, what they mentioned uh, for the key features, 80 AMD RDNA 3 compute units with uh, ray tracing plus AI accelerators, 64 megabytes AMD Infinity Cache technology, we have DisplayPort 2.1, AMD Radiance Display Engine, AMD Radian Boost technology, and AMD Radian Anti-Lag technology. It has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, so no flops like uh, 4060, 4060 Ti with 8 gigabytes. And uh, without a doubt, uh, 549 price tag is quite uh, interesting. So we're going to have only AIB models and memory speed is 18 gigabit per second with memory bus 256 bits. Effective memory bandwidth is 576 gigabits per second. Uh, we have AV1 encode. Talking about uh, connections, uh, HDMI 2.1a and DisplayPort uh, 2.1 with maximum DP bandwidth uh, 54 gigabit per second. Now the board power is 200. 60 watts and recommended power supply is 700 watts. When we compare that to RTX 4070, what we get is the same price tag uh, when we're talking about MSRP. Memory amount is lower, so uh, 4070 has 12 gigabytes at 21 gigabit per second speed. Memory bus is 192 bit. Uh, effective memory bandwidth is 504 gigabit per second. HDMI 2.1a and DisplayPort 1.4a. Uh, the max DP bandwidth is 32.4 gigabit per second and uh, now the board power is 200 watts so that's 60 watts less than RX 7900 GRE and recommended the power supply wattage is 650 watts. Now taking that into consideration you do need a higher power supply with well basically higher wattage. Then we have higher memory bus, higher bandwidth on the display port cable, logical, and uh, I think that's quite all right because you do get that performance boost at 1440p. Now what they tested with 7900GRE and 1440p, uh, they used the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X. In my gaming benchmarks, I used AMD Ryzen 9 7900X 3D. So comparing their results to mine, it's going to be a bit of a difference, of course, and quite logical. But uh, let's check it out. So comparing this one, 7900GRE with RTX 4070, for instance, some games that I have, F1 23, 
In 1440p Ultra Details DirectX 12, we have 221 FPS with this card and with the RTX 4070 190. Then we have Grand Theft Auto 97 compared to 89. Hitman 3 240 to 192, Hogwarts Legacy 104 to 85. Then we have Starfield uh, 65 to 54 FPS when we're comparing uh, 7900 GRE and RTX 4070. Witcher 3 90 FPS and uh, 70 FPS for the RTX 4070. Now 1440p with ray tracing, we have control on the GRE model 63 while on 4070 uh, 61. Then we go with F123 111 FPS, while the RTX 4070 has 115. Far Cry 6 125 compared to 115. Metro Exodus uh, Enhanced Edition Extreme Details DirectX 12 68 to 67 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider 115 compared to 119 and The Witcher 3 63 compared to 52. On average, what they got is when we're talking about 1440p without ray tracing. What average of all games that they benched 147 while RTX 4070 126 and then with ray tracing 91 compared to 90. Now let's touch base with synthetic benchmarks and first of all I'm going to go with AIDA 64 Extreme Edition what I usually do in other benchmarks for I don't know case testing um, AAO testing, CPU tower cooler testing. There's also a possibility to grab the thermals of the GPU. So after 30 minutes test with the Sapphire Radian RX 7900 GRE Nitro Plus, uh, AIDA 64 pushed it of course 100% and we got 62 degrees Celsius on this card, which means one thing, that the case if it's nicely ventilated, with these three huge fans you'll be getting quite nice thermals. I think it varied from 60 to 64, so I would say average 62, that's uh, how it goes. So I think that's quite all right. When we take, uh, for instance, RTX 4080 from MSI Gaming X Trio goes 66 to 68, but it does give quite better performance, I do have to say. But this one is quite alright with 62 degrees, I think that's solid. Now let's compare synthetic benchmarks before we go into gaming. So uh, as I stated, they're using 7900X, I'm using AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D and in TimeSpy the score was for my benchmarks 17,652 while they had 19,720. Then we go with GPU score 18,557 while they had 21,033 and CPU score I had 13,834 and they had 14,553. Now I got lower scores and that shouldn't worry you because here's the catch. I ran TimeSpy, TimeSpy Extreme, Port Royal, Firestrike, Firestrike Extreme, Firestrike Ultra and it did in each of those benchmarks Either with their configuration, it went better than in my configuration, and in some benchmarks, I got better results. So let's check those out. TimeSpy Extreme, for instance, we have a score. I had 9,418. They got 9,909. Uh, for the GPU score, 9,530. They had 9,957. And uh, 8,834 for GPU score, they got 9,609. Now Port Royale, what I got is 12,011, they got 11,459, this is what I was telling you about. Now Firestrike, for, for the general score, 40,758, they got 41,549, and for the GPU score, 55,633, they got 54,513. Physics score, 38,150. They got 40,359 and uh, combined score I got 14,042, they got 15,168. Firestrike Extreme, my score was 26,212, their score was 25,316. And then we also can check, uh, you can see the graphs and the difference and then we go to the Firestrike Ultra where their general score was 13,687, I had 14,241. GPU score was also above by almost 6700 and physics score was less for me and uh, eventually the combined score was much better for my benchmarks. 
Now checking out the gaming, of course I benchmarked uh, 10 games in 1440p and 4K resolution. In all games I ran ultra details in 1440p and the results were definitely amazing and I do have to admit that. And uh, then going to 4K on ultra details, some games couldn't uh, budge above 30 FPS. And uh, this is the reason where you do need to, in with this card, you do need to regulate those, um, I would say, details to grab a possibility to run 4K gaming with this card. I mean, to be honest, $549 MSRP to actually go with medium to, I would say, high. And taking new prices into consideration, even the old prices that we had before COVID and all the other stuff, I think $549 for this type of gaming with this FPS, okay, I had quite stronger CPU than going in some mid-tier budget range when we're talking about uh, processors. And if you're considering this card as a mid-tier graphic card, because it doesn't compete with 1700 XTX or XT, uh, it kind of does resemble to the part where you'll be able to play 1440p without a problem. And I think the majority is somewhere between 1080p with higher refresh rate and 1440p. And I think that 4K still isn't mainstream as 1080p and 1440p. We're still not reaching that much amount of 4K gaming, even though, of course, loads of you guys are still doing that. But if you're gaming on 4K, you're not going to go with a $549 graphic card. You'll most likely go with something uh, a bit higher and stronger. One more thing that I do have to mention, you have two 8-pin connectors right here that you need to connect to your power supply, as already stated, minimum 700 watts, and the board power consumption is 260 watts. All in all, you can check the gaming right now because this is where I'll end my part and you can uh, enjoy the bit of a gaming that I managed uh, to record in this short time period. And uh, that'll be all for today, guys. I think it's a good card for the performance that you get in 1440p, 4K, it still isn't, but I, I see where this card is aimed at, and I think that would be a good uh, target if you, not you, but uh, if the price uh, that goes in retails and e-tailers, uh, that it stays somewhere or at least a bit of above when we take tax and all the other stuff into consideration, I think this would be quite okay. Guys, thanks for watching, enjoy the gaming, and uh, that'll be all for today. Bye.